All right, guys, welcome back to Dugout Coalition. We are talking through some infield play today, um, going through all the major plays that you would have to make and breaking down mechanics in each area um, to make sure that everything is fully understood uh, as far as what it takes to be a high-level infielder. To start, any high-level infielder is really, really good at being prepared for the ball. So we have with us today Sam Griffith, Oakland baseball commit, ready to show us how to do some of this stuff. Um, Sam has been in our program for about five years at this point, so he has done a lot of this um, a decent amount of time. So um, he's going to demonstrate for us. Um, we're going to start with our prep step. So when we talk about preparation for a play, uh, the old school method was the old creep step, right? Glove out front, stepping into the ball, um, and over the past few years that has changed. So when we talk about a prep step, uh, what we want, we don't mind if a player steps in a little bit, but the last step should be one little hop with two feet landing at the same time, um, landing on the balls of our feet. So if Sam were prepping for a play, it would look like this. And we see on the landing, right, Sam isn't a big hop guy. You can be. Um, Sam's pretty little on that, but landing on the balls of our feet in a prepared position to make a play. Um, I'm going to have him do it one more time and talk through. Hold it when you get to that spot. We'll talk through a few different pieces. Here. Okay, when we get there, if you look, Elbows are tucked to the sides. A lot of players struggle with elbows flaring out. Okay, we need to stay close so that we can move quickly with short levers. Um, and you see glove at its side right here. Right? If they were to flip this and do the old school out here, the first movement that he would have to make is pulling it back in order to move either direction. So although we do feel the ball out front, we want to make sure hands are in that spot. You're good. Can you relax for a second? Okay, so when we do that, hands are tucked. Elbows at our sides, um, and we want to be about that height as a middle infielder. Okay, if I were to tell Sam to do this as a corner infielder, let's see what your prep step would be. Okay, so if you notice, height is just a lot lower. Biggest difference as a middle, we need to be higher because we need to move laterally, whereas a corner, we're going to attack vertically a lot more. So the lower we are, the easier it is to fall forward or take a drop step back. Okay, that's the only difference. You're good. That's the only difference in middle and corner as far as prep step is just the height at which we land in order to be prepared to make the most plays that we would most likely see. Okay, what we do to train the timing on that um, is really, really simple. Okay, we just take a ball and we throw it up to simulate when ball lands, landing our timing. Okay, in a game, what that means is we want to land our prep step as bat is contacting ball. Okay, if we're early, we're not going to be as quick. If we're late, we're going to be late to the ball. Okay, so we need to get really, really good as infielders at landing that prep set timing at contact point so we can get the, fir the quickest first step possible on that play. Okay, so we'll just do a couple of reps here, working really quick. Ball goes up, and we land. Okay, big common mistake for a lot of players is they will jump to start their prep step as ball's landing rather than trying to land their feet. Okay, highly recommend as a coach, that one was kind of high. You can mix up height on these. So if we go lower, okay, simulate different heights because pitchers are going to throw different speeds. And with those different speeds, pitchers are going to throw different breaking balls and those types of things. So fielders have to be able to adjust quite a bit on when they're getting up and landing that prep set um, based on when ball is actually arriving at the plate. Okay, once we're able to prep step at a high level and do that consistently um, with the right timing on our landing, with arms tucked, balls of our feet, height difference just based on position. Then we move into understanding how to read a hop, okay? And the first step there is understanding what types of hops there are, all right? So when we look at hop type, there's really four different types of hops that we'll see on a daily basis. Those are long hops, short hops, mid hops, and that worm burner, that snake ball that just rolls on the ground, okay? It's really not hopping at all. Based on those, we do some different glove patterns that we'll get into in a few minutes here, but the first step is being able to understand what you're looking for in a hop and when we want to field it. Okay, so if we're looking at fielding a long hop, okay, which the two hop types that we really want to try to get are long hops and short hops, okay, anything mid hop has the ability to handcuff us and we want to avoid those at all costs, okay, so our job as a fielder is to choose when to approach and when to attack those individual hops and to do our best to put ourselves in a position to get a short hop or a long hop if the ball is in fact bouncing, okay? So we'll talk long hop first. When we feel the long hop, okay, ball bounces, it's coming up, 
And if it hits something on the ground on its way up, it could shoot a couple different directions, right? Hopefully you're playing on great fields and that never happens, um, but we all know better. So our goal on a long hop is ball bounces, it's coming up. We want to field it after its peak when the ball is coming back down, okay? So if we look at it this way, ball bounces up, we want to field it now as it's descending. Because at that point in time, the ball can't do anything funky. We know exactly where it's going to go. It will continue to follow the trajectory that it's on. Okay? So that's the one that's the easiest hop to field if we can time it right. On a short hop, what we want to do is we want to take that hop and we want to meet it as it hits the ground to not give it an opportunity to hit anything and bounce up and take a goofy hop. Okay? And that's where the mid hop is challenging because it bounces and we're fielding almost a long hop, but on the way up, which makes it a more challenging play to make. Okay, the rolled ball, the snake ball, super easy to field. We know exactly where it's going. It's just staying on the ground. Okay, so an easy way to train this, go ahead and drop the knees real quick. An easy way to train this is to go on knees and to just show where hops would be. So if Sam were to present glove out front, right there would be a short hop. He's able to go and get that. Okay, mid hop would be about here, and then a long hop would be a little bit farther out. Okay, so if you just set balls in front or on the side of a fielder, you have the ability to then feed them. Yeah. You have the ability to feed them and have them go and get the ball like it is. Okay, so here's a long hop, getting it on the way down. Okay, short hop, presses through. Okay, mid hop is the hard one. Sam does a good job of taking that mid hop and creating his own short hop. Okay, that's a big goal as an infielder, is to create the hop that you want. So rather than short hop being here and Sam already being in position, go ahead and go and get that ball, okay, as if it was a mid hop that you're creating a short hop. Okay, so if you look at body posture, he's staying in good posture here, shoulders are down, head is down on ball, but we're extending glove out to press through that to create the hop that we want, rather than sitting back and getting eaten up. Okay, you're good. All right, so when we look at those, once we understand the different hop types, now we have to understand how to take our approach to the ball when we're moving to arrive on time, to present glove properly, and to be in a position to field the hop that we want. Okay, if you do not do hop training, one thing that helps, have your players count the number of hops um, in their practice, right? So you hit a ground ball, have them count one, two, what hop are they fielding, okay? And then once they get good at that, start telling them what hop to field and what type of hop, okay? So we could go second hop, I want you to get it on a long hop. Third hop, I want you to get it on a short hop, okay? The more you do training like that, the player has the ability to start to figure out in their mind exactly how to approach and where to go based on hop to adjust their own feet and glove pattern to get the ball that they want, okay? Major League Baseball, they primarily feel about 47% of their ground balls that they feel their long hops. And that doesn't mean that they're hit differently. What it means is the infielders do an incredible job of creating the hop that they actually want. Okay, so once we have hop, you can stand up, you're good. Once we have hop, then we talk about actual approach to the ball. All right, so there's obviously different directions we can go. We'll get into do or die, so the hard ball that we have to come in and attack. Okay, but the three primary balls are something directly at us, something to our glove side, and something to our backhand. All right, so when we look at a direct ball, that's the hardest ball to read hop because your view or angle is directly in front of you. So you don't have the perspective of being on the side and being able to see where ball bounces and exact trajectory of where it's going to bounce next. So what we wanna do as a fielder is make sure that we take our body and we get it to the side of the ball so that we can see that view. Okay, when we do that and we get shoulders turned, it also helps us approach back and get more momentum into the throw by closing that gate. Okay, but the primary reason is to see the hop that we have. Okay, so if this ball is where Sam was fielding it on a direct ball, okay, we always have our players start with a prep step, even on any training drill, ball and glove, anything like that. Okay, but if Sam were to approach this, go ahead and slow mo. Okay, he's gonna land his prep step and you're gonna see shoulders open up on the approach to come back through, okay? You're good. So, on that, if you notice, shoulders completely open up. That's gonna give him that perspective and angle to actually see the hop and then attack back through on the hop that he actually wants to field, okay? A lot of infielders struggle more with a direct ball than they do where they have to move left or right 
just because they don't have that understanding of when to attack or what hop to go and get. Okay, so we need to do a really good job as infielders of creating that on our own by getting shoulders turned and getting to the side of the baseball or softball. All right, once we're there, all right, now when we present glove, there's two big things that we have to look at. We have to look at how glove comes out to present, and we also have to look at how our left foot comes through and lands to field the ball. Okay, so we'll go through direct glove side and backhand here, talking through different lanes, but on a direct ball, and Sam did it really good there, but now rather than watching shoulders, watch his left heel when he approaches this ball. Okay, so go ahead, rev set, shoulders open, boom. So if we look at the left heel right here, what we see is heel is on the ground, but we have toe slightly up. Okay, that toe being up allows us to rock down onto that toe, Go ahead, and when we do that, you see that shift in his hips and that momentum move towards wherever that toe is pointing. So it's really important that we have toe to target. So his toe is pointing on the angle of where first base would be for him as a shortstop, so that all of his momentum is being carried through on direction, okay? If we were to have him go here, go right into a crane from that spot, just go straight up into the crane, okay? Your last step, when we train it, we talk about a crane or a flamingo step. It's just that leg being up, and as this heel drops down, you'll see glove present at the same time, okay? So go ahead. We want heel and glove to present at the same time. If those two are off, then your step progression will likely be off on the back end, okay? So those two are almost connected, whereas heel goes down, glove comes out, all right? Common ways to screw this up, okay? Go right back into your flamingo or crane, okay? Go glove flip on this one, flip it out. Common way to screw it up, you saw that little flip action right there. If we're flipping glove over, it's not presented until we're all the way down on the ground, which gives the ball an opportunity to bounce funky, get under us, and for our glove presentation to be late, okay? Another way that we screw it up, go ahead and just twist it a little bit, is a glove twist, okay? A lot of guys, as they approach ball, there's unnecessary movement of glove side to side, or flipping or twisting that allows or uh, prevents us from being on time with that presentation. So what we really want is that inside part of the glove, we should feel going straight down our left hip to where it's already open and what we call a shove action, right? We're just shoving it straight out there. So go ahead and do one more with the right action. We're right there and we shove straight down to present. That way if ball takes a bad hop as we're going down to present, we still give ourselves a chance to adjust to where ball is because glove has open face already to the ball that we're about to receive.